So you've probably have ordered this at dim sum. You love it, I love it, but I bet you didn't know how easy this is to make at home. I'm going to show you my tips and tricks of the trade on how to make turnip cake, also known as Lord Go. So let's crack on. So what do we need? I've got here a daikon. You could also use Chinese turnip. We've got some spring onion, garlic. This isn't probably traditional to this dish, but I love garlic in all my dishes, so I'm going to include it and some Chinese sausage, also known as lapshong. It's try and get the fatty version. That's gonna give off the best flavor. The other fillings that we're gonna use will be like some dried mushroom. So this is like some dried shiitake. Uh, we've got dried shrimp. And I found this whilst rummaging through my cupboard, some dried scallops. Now that's gonna give a really beautiful umami flavor, savory and seafood flavor that's gonna contrast with the fatty sausage really, really well. They're really expensive, so this is gonna be a bit of a treat. But, so if you don't have it, don't worry about that. And of course, rice flour is going to be like the flour element that's gonna thicken and make it that cake texture. Now don't get, don't use glutinous rice flour. We've got normal plain rice flour. So with the dried ingredients, I'm going to soak them in some water to rehydrate them. Now I'm gonna use about a cup of water here. Some people soak the sausage. I don't want to because I want to render as much fat and flavor from this as possible. So I'm just going to lob these ends off and then I'm gonna cut it up into small little pieces because you don't want a large piece of Chinese sausage in your mouth. You can find these in any Southeast Asian supermarket or online, or you can even make your own if you're really adventurous. I'm gonna just chop it up into small pieces. I can already feel how oily this is going to be. It's coming off. Look at this Chinese sausage. I used to find it too sweet. It's actually got a very sweet profile. And sometimes the offal that they use in the Chinese sausage was just not to my liking growing up. But now I absolutely adore it. I love it in this dish particularly, even in clay pot rice. It's just one of those ingredients that really elevates and brings like such a multi-dimensional flavor to Asian cooking. Now that's all cut up nicely. I'm going to pop it all in the tray, ready for cooking. We're gonna prepare the radish. Now we can grate it using one of these sort of graters where it will create little strips like so. Or we can use a box grater. Now it's important to measure how much radish you have. So after I've grated it, I'm just going to weigh this out. So I'm gonna measure out the rice flour next. So we've got 450 of the daikon. And so that will be about 150 grams, or one cup of this rice flour. Now let's chop up the mushrooms. They've had about 15 minutes now. Give them a little squeeze, and they're nice and soft and plump. Now give the little stem a little squeeze. Sometimes they can be quite hard and rubbery, but so you can discard those. And then just lay them flat, cut them into little strips. Now if there's a little bit, I say al dente, or have a little bit of hardness to them, just soak them for a bit longer. Now you could use fresh shiitake mushrooms. They are more expensive, but I find these dried mushrooms get to use that rehydrated liquid for cooking the turnip cake. Now for the rest of the shrimp and the scallop, I'm going to just take it out of that water there and give them a little squeeze. See that scallop just falls apart. So that is perfect. That's ready. And then for the shrimp, we're just going to give it a quick runner through with our knife just to roughly chop it up. So it's the same size pieces as the sausage and the mushroom. The smell from the seafood just gives this wonderful umami flavor, the natural MSG that we want. We've got a daikon, shredded daikon. We've got chopped spring onion. We've got mushroom, the chopped up shrimp, some garlic and the Chinese sausage. And of course some measured out rice flour. Right, now we're ready to cook. First up, we're gonna to want to render and cook out this Chinese sausage. Now, I'm not gonna use any oil because the sausage is gonna be quite fatty. Now, can you see the oil coming out there? This is exactly what you're after. 
Right, it's been a couple of minutes now. We're going to cook off the garlic. Again, keep it stirring because you don't want it to burn. Next up, the shrimp and mushroom. Mushroom and shrimp is just, just reacting to the fat there. Perfect. Now, spring onion is going to go in. And this will only take a minute or two. Not even that. 30 seconds. Ow, I just got... Ah, ah, ah. Don't catch the blooper. <laughs> and that's why you don't wear low-cut tops in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm going to season it up a little bit with a bit of sesame oil. Um, a little bit of MSG. Just a little bit because the shrimp has a lot of natural MSG and a bit of pepper. Wonderful. Now, turn the heat off. I'm going to grab my tray again and I'm going to put it, take it all out. And let that cool down. All right, I've given the wok a little clean and we're going to cook out the daikon, muli, radish, whatever you've got. The radish is going to be really bitter, so it's good to cook it out really well. All right, we're going to use about a cup of water in with the radish. And I'm just going to put it with the lid to kind of steam and cook it through until it's sort of more translucent and fully cooked through. Otherwise, you just end up with a really bitter flavouring to your radish, especially since we're using daikon, which is a lot more bitter than Chinese turnip. I hope everyone got a lot of hongbao on the weekend, unless you're married, like this mug here who had to give out a lot of money. <laughs> but it was cute seeing the kids enjoy Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year. It's, it's like probably one of the first years where the kids actually got to really enjoy it and trying to get uh, Riley to say gong hei fat choi was pretty damn cute because all he'd go was hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I wish I caught it on camera. <laughs> Not everything needs to be on camera though. You see it's cooked through a little bit more. Just take a bite. Yeah, that's soft. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to transfer the cooked daikon into a bowl because I want to do is just strain out and the liquid I want to strain out that liquid and measure how much liquid it is because it's quite important on how much liquid rice flour and daikon you have. Take out the daikon and then squeeze out all that liquid. All of that there. I'm going to measure out that liquid underneath. So what I'm after is like a cup of water or liquid to the rice flour that we've got there. Get a good old squeeze and you can see how that daikon is chained all nice and translucent and cut through but it hasn't gone mushy because I used to I kept it into larger strips. I find when you use something like a food processor it just chops up the radish too much and it kind of just goes really mushy you end up with a bit more of a mushy texture for the Lorbat Go, which is not my favourite, but it's possible. Obviously, if you're cooking this in bulk for a restaurant, perhaps you would do a shortcuts like that. Look how much liquid comes off this. So that daikon, I just squeeze the hell out of it. I'm going to pop it into a, bu into a bowl. I'm just going to measure... There's just about half a cup there of water. So I kept some of the reserved rehydrated liquid from the, when I did the shrimps and the mushroom, and I'm just going to pour in the remaining amount. So now I've got one cup of liquid. That's just gonna give it a little bit of extra flavor. You can just use normal water. So I'm just gonna add the rice flour into that liquid and give it a good old whisk. If you add that rice flour to a hot liquid or a warm liquid, it will start cooking and congealing really quickly. Fully whisked in, 
I'm going to add it to our daikon, our blanched daikon. Make sure you get every little bit out. And then just fold it in. Don't worry if it looks really runny right now. You just want to make sure that every, you just want to make sure that every part of that daikon is covered in that batter. And now next part is really important not to forget, we need to season it. So I've got a little bit of sugar, a little touch of salt, a little touch of white pepper, and a little something that I do use at home quite a lot is some Icambillus powder. So it's anchovies, dried anchovies that we've dried into a powder. That is basically just like a natural umami flavor again, which complements the shrimp and the scallop that we used earlier. You don't have to do this. It's just something that I like to do to be a bit extra. I'm going to fold in all that seasoning. And then we're going to transfer that to a pan or wok. I'm going to keep this on a really low heat. And using a spatula, just keep everything moving until it thickens up a little bit. You can do this in a bamari, so it's like a bowl over a, some water if you're worried about overcooking it. But if you just take a little bit of extra care, and keep it moving, it shouldn't catch or burn. There you go. You can see now how it's starting to thicken up. At this point, I'm going to add in the filling and fold that in. Now you don't want to cook it too much on the stove because we're going to steam it. Right, now it's ready to go into the molds. Now the next part you won't get a cake tray, round tin, anything and you want to line it. So I've got these little cake tins which have like a removable base. This is perfect for a doing the turnip cake. Um, just place the tray on the, onto, a par, onto some parchment and then just cut around it. And using a little bit of vegetable oil any oil you've got on the face, just brush your cake tin. You don't have to line it if you're oiling it because it should come straight out. You could line it with cling film if you don't have any parchment, but obviously trying to minimize our plastic use. I'm just gonna use a little bit of parchment just for today. So it kind of resembles what I describe and my mother describes it as like wallpaper paste where the rice flour has started to cook with the water liquid and has got a little sticky. Now just put, line your trays and really squash it in so it's nice and even. You haven't got any holes. Give it a good press around the edges and corners. Like I say, you could do this in any cake tin, like an eight inch is always a good size. Six inch will do. Now that's in the tray, that is ready for steaming. Now there's a number of different ways you can steam. Like with our fish recipe that we did last week, you could use a wok with a little wok stand. So this is a three tier steamer. We use this for steaming fish, or when we're making uh, Lord Bat Go, or fried carrot cake, or even when we're doing making quay. Um, it has three different tiers, but this one I've, I've taken those tiers away. Radio. So a cake of that sort of size, this is boiling, so it's going to go in. A tenet cake of that size, we're going to check it after half an hour. But it's really important whenever you're using a steamer to always keep that water topped up, otherwise it's just going to be burning dry and it won't steam at all. Right, so it's taken about an hour so far. I'm just going to check on it now. Get your thing or tongs. Now it's a little firm, a little bit wet on top. That's all right. Give it a little poke through. It's coming out a bit cleaner. I'm just going to let that cool down and then we're going to take it out of the tin. So we're taking out the turnip cake out of the steamer. Don't worry if it feels a little bit soft and you're a, bit, a little bit squidgy not sure whether it's cooked enough, just pierce it and see if it comes, the stick comes up nice and clean. So when it's soft, don't worry, it will firm up when you put it in the fridge. And then, only then, will we start cutting into it once it's set in the fridge because 
otherwise it'll just crumble. And the perfect accompaniment with the turnip cake we love is of course chili. We've got some fresh chili sauce that I made the other day for Lunar New Year. This is just a blend of chilies, garlic, vinegar, salt, sugar. I'll put the recipe on my website. And then I'm just gonna mix a little bit with some fresh lime and a little bit of chicken stock to make a really zingy, fresh chili sauce to go with the turnip cake. Or you can do my other fan, my other favorite would be crispy chili oil with lots of crispy bits inside. So like fried onions, shallots, garlic, you name it. Textural heaven, but with a lot of spice. So I've got some fresh lime that I'm gonna mix with this chili sauce. Have you guys made the, the turnip cake before? Do you love it? I always order it when I go to dim sum restaurants. When, as soon as I see it on the menu, I'm the first one to order it because it is divine. But it is quite simple to make once you get the hang of it. Now this is firmed up really nicely. You can see it's got really, it's got a little bouncy. It's got a little bit of give to it. Now if it's stuck to the edges, just carefully run a little paring knife or bread knife around the edge just to loosen it from the edges. And if you're using a, that's why it's so much easier using one of these sort of trays because it will just slide right off. Simples. Now apparently some people eat it like this, but for me, I love to have this with a little crispy edges on the outside. So you know how I love things being hard on the outside, but a real soft one on the inside. So we're gonna cut off a little chunk like this and we're gonna pan fry them. Right, I'm just gonna plate it up. It's really, really simple. However you'd like to serve it, I'm going to do all three pieces, all nice and crispy there, on a plate like that. I've got some crispy sort of spring onion on the side here. And of course, red hot chili sauce. Okay, I'm just gonna put that on the ramekin on the side. That's got loads of fresh lime juice or calamansi juice in just a really zing and that is turnip cake or low back goal really really simple you've got to make it I can't wait to dive into this we make this every year for Lunar New Year it is one of our favorites every time we go out to dim sum I highly recommend you have it give it a go I can't wait to dive in This is always my favorite part, the eating. This is looking so crispy. And it's super crispy, soft in the inside. Good try it with the chili. Mmm. Damn, that's good. Ooh, that chili's got a real kick to it. Well, that was delicious. I highly recommend you guys give it a go. Like I said, one of my favorites at the dim sum restaurant. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button, give us a like and leave us a comment. I love reading them. Uh, they make my day and I'll see you guys next week. Actually, I want the whole thing. <laughs>